Good morning, everybody, and happy Sabbath. It's so good to see you all here <laughs> on this rainy day of many rainy days. Um, hopefully, we'll get some sunshine soon. Would you stand as we sing our opening hymn? Thank you, God, for your graciousness towards us. We thank you for your generosity and your kindness and for the strength that you promise to give us when we're weak. We put this service in your hands this morning and ask that you uh, bless every element of it and that when we leave this place, we're more energized and enthused to share you with others. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Good morning. Actually, if you all would like to stand back up, we're going to do another congregational song, America the Beautiful. The words are up on the screen. Good morning and happy Sabbath church family. Our um, offering this morning will go to our conference advance. And uh, I would like to share with you an experience of Ellen G. White when she says like, when at the time, uh, brother Erzin Berger was coming to America and he presented to her a very nice silk dress and it cost $45, and $45 at the time is very expensive. And it was also the time where Brother Andrews was going to Europe for his first ministry, for the mission there, and they really needed money. So she was thinking, the gift that was given to me, it will also benefit people there. So she went to a merchant and she said like, sell this dress, whatever you can get from this, and we will give this to the mission. And so the merchant did whatever he can, and the dress was sold for $50. And when people knew about this, and they also did something that also helped benefit, and it became like a snowball, like everyone was helping. And so um, 
Brother Andrew said, like, the money that came was perfect because it came at the right time when he needed it there in Europe. And sometimes in our lives, when we have this thing like, oh, I really want to give something, but I am so short. I am so short that sometimes we cannot afford to give something. But God had promised it long time ago in Malachi 3.10 that he said, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food enough in my house. And he even challenged us to prove him now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And uh, our deacons, please stand as we're going to pray. And please also don't forget that for our, um, for our church budget, because we are a little bit behind in our uh, giving. Shall we pray? Our loving Father in heaven, we come before your presence this morning, Lord. I pray that you will give us the heart to continue to give for your cause. And uh, bless these offerings and the tithes that we're going to receive today. That it will be given to the cause that you wanted it. And Lord, help us to remember always that you have that promise that you will open the doors of heaven. That there will be no room enough to receive thy blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The bugle has sounded, its notes drift away. This time now belongs to you. On this day, for one brief moment, hear the silence fill the air. Think of those who walked beside us, now no longer there. Then don't cry, but hear their laughter, for their spirit lives inside. Let that mystic stream of memory fill our hearts with pride. Make us humble, make us knowing, and accepting what is done on this day, for now, forever, make this nation one. On this day, for all the fallen, make this nation one. Will you first join me in a moment of silence? Thank you, church family. And to all those who served, to all those who have lost, we owe you a debt of gratitude that we can never repay. But this weekend we remember on Memorial Day all those that we've said goodbye to. But we remember in the hope that one day soon, because of Jesus, we will see our departed loved ones again. We'd like to welcome you to church here this morning at the Piedmont Park Seventh-day Adventist Church. Hope that you are blessed. Hope that you've been blessed this past week. And on this Memorial Day weekend, I think it's okay to have fun because that's it's what our loved ones would want. They'd want us to enjoy life. But in, in the fun and the picnics and the barbecues and, and everything that we do this week and in the graduations that are happening, uh, may you take a moment or two to think about those who have sacrificed time, energy, and those who have sacrificed all. That's what we celebrate on Memorial Day this coming Monday. And if you happen to see a veteran, and we have many here among us, shake their hand. Tell them thank you. I just have a few announcements for you today. There are lots of graduations that are happening, and you can uh, take part in those. And uh, graduation for College View Academy is going to be happening tomorrow, and so I invite you to join that as well. 
You can see all the announcements that are in your bulletin, but I want to just highlight a few of them. The Piedmont Park Peddlers are planning on going out today at 4, uh, meeting at uh, Highway 2 and 27th, but if it is raining, they will cancel for that. Uh, also, speaking of cancellation, I, I hope next week that you will come to church. I just actually hope that you won't be here because next week is our annual camp meeting here in Lincoln, Nebraska. And so we won't be having church here. If you come, you'll be very lonely. But if you see someone else, then invite them to come just a couple miles down south to the College View Church. That's where we will be. Uh, camp meeting actually starts on Wednesday evening. And then there will be meetings in the morning and throughout the day on Thursday and Friday. And then we'll have special services on Sabbath and Saturday night. Wonderful speaker is going to be there. So I hope that you will plan to come and join. Uh, also going to be great concerts as well. And you can see... Uh, more details in the bulletin on that. I also want to let the ladies know that there is a chance for you to volunteer and to help out at a Fresh Start Home. That's going to be this Sunday evening, May 24, and you can contact Carol Lenhart for more information about that. This coming Monday, uh, we're going to be remembering and celebrating the life of Edward Beershears, who is a longtime member here at Piedmont Park, and the family uh, has asked uh, to have the service here this coming Monday at 11 and has invited all those who would like to join them uh, to come and, and celebrate Ed's life and his commitment here uh, to this church and to his family. I also want to make mention just a couple more announcements that uh, coming up, I won't be able to tell you next week, but the following Saturday, Saturday, June 6th, we'll have a very special uh, free concert here with the Allen family. And I remember seeing these guys years ago when all those ones were little. They were tiny when I saw them. They've all grown up, uh, but they can still sing. Uh, so I hope that you'll come and join us there on Saturday night, June 6th. And then just one last announcement. Uh, we've got Vacation Bible School. It is coming. Memorial Day weekend is kind of the opening weekend for summer, and that means Vacation Bible School is going to be happening, and we need your help. It doesn't happen on its own. It's not just Charlene. She needs an army of volunteers. So if you could let her know how you can participate, even if it's just for one or two nights, we will take you. And it's a ton of fun. So I hope that you'll think about how you can help out with that. That is coming up in July, but we got to get prepped and get ready for that. So thank you, everyone, uh, for being here. Uh, and I hope that this weekend, I hope that you're blessed. I hope that you stay safe. And in our worship service today, I pray that God will touch you. I'd like to invite you to join in our song of praise this morning um, by standing up and singing the heart of worship with us.
As we prepare for a time of prayer together, we're going to sing Jesus, Name Above All Names. And I just want to mention I'm thankful for Mackenzie and Abigail who are joining us in singing, and Micah and Phil too. <laughs> so Jesus, Name Above All Names. Please kneel with me as we pray. <laughs> Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you for providing once again a, a Sabbath day that we can come and worship you. Uh, a day, Lord, where we can stop from all that we're doing, stop from our work and our troubles, and come here and just focus solely on you, Lord. Thank you so much. Lord, in this time, uh, in the springtime, and there's graduation, and the flowers are blooming, Lord, we're reminded that uh, we can start again. Uh, we can start a new week. We can start uh, a new relationship with you. And Lord, I just want to thank you that uh, you always give us a chance to come back to you, no matter what we've done, no matter where we've been, Lord, you you always have your arms open for us. Lord, thank you so much for, for your son that gave us that chance. Lord, as uh, we seek to worship you today, may you be glorified, and may we be blessed in the process, Lord. Please bless our speaker as he presents us a message. May we go from here and and be closer to you to help renew our relationship uh, throughout this next week. And Lord, as we have camp meeting coming up, I just ask that you not only keep everyone safe as they're traveling, some people from far away, uh, but Lord, also that you, you be with those that are speaking. May they uh, present us your word. May we be blessed because of it. May we go out and bless others from what we've, what we've heard. Lord, thank you for this church. Thank you for this family. Please be with those that are sick or need your healing touch. And Lord, may we go out and bless others like you have blessed us. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture reading today is from Ruth 2, 8 through 12. Ruth 2, 8 through 12, from the New King James Version. Then Boaz said to Ruth, You will listen, my daughter, will you not? Do not go to glean in another field, nor go from here, but stay close to my young women. Let your, let your eyes be on the field which they reap, and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? 
And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. So she fell on her face, bowed down to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes, that you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner? And Boaz answered and said to her, It has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, and how you have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth, and have come to a people whom you did not know before. The Lord repay your work, and a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. Welcome to this uh, Memorial Day service here at Piedmont Park Church. Uh, we would say as Seventh-day Adventists that uh, every, every Sabbath is Memorial Day, right? When we remember the greatest ever divine human soldier who sacrificed his life so that we could live forever. It's not a bad exchange, is it, that the gospel offers us? And what were the weapons that Jesus fought with? Prayer, the Word of God, the Bible, kind words, uh, loving, loving kindness, deeds of mercy, uh, words of truth. And so we find ourselves in the same in the same battle, in the same war. And we're going to look today at uh, the second uh, chapter in the book of Ruth. And we're going to look at, uh, in particular, ten, 10 character traits that God always blesses. You want to have a productive life? You have a good life? Uh, a life that is blessed by God? We can find out in this chapter today that there are at least 10, I'm sure, but I picked out 10 uh, character traits that God always blesses. And the promise of this chapter is whoever, whosoever seeks shelter or refuge under the wings of the God of Israel shall be rewarded. Ruth is a, an ordinary story with extraordinary results. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel I'm living very much an ordinary life. There's the day-to-day -day things to take care of. And sometimes it almost gets mundane. But with God in our lives, with Jesus in our hearts, an ordinary life can be transformed into an, into an extraordinary life. And so I hope the same thing happens for you. Let's pray, shall we? Dear Heavenly Father, as you remember especially this weekend, those brave uh, men and women uh, here in America and around the world who have given their lives for a good cause, especially in military conflict. We thank you for the sacrifice that our freedom comes out of. And we pray this morning that uh, as we uh, look into your word, that we may indeed be blessed by being here, that you might use these words to uh, change lives, uh, make new beginnings. We thank you for the story of hope that Ruth offers us, we pray these things in Jesus name amen uh, sometimes you have to just start by thinking the obvious and I'll do that today Ruth was not an Israelite Ruth was not an Israelite 
It's amazing sometimes you see in the Gospel of Matthew that Jesus uh, endorses uh, two people in particular for having great faith. Do you want to be a child that has great faith? You want to be a young person that has great faith? You want to be a man that has great faith? You want to be a woman that has great faith? Well, in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus uh, recommended or commended uh, two people in particular for having great faith. And that was a Canaanite woman and a Roman centurion. Uh, our story that had started in chapter 1 with a great loss and tragedy. In fact, it's my suggestion to you that at the end of Ruth chapter 1, as Ruth, as uh, Naomi, forgive me, as Naomi returns to her homeland, as she returns to Bethlehem, with her daughter-in-law, Ruth, who's made a tremendous statement of commitment in chapter 1. The, the narrator of this story, the narrator of this story has, wants us as the audience to ask the question, can anything good come out of this situation? Naomi has lost her husband. She's lost her two sons in the land of Moab. And so she returns with her daughter-in-law, who is also a widow. And there is just a drop of hope that the author gives us at the end of chapter 1, because God has provided food again uh, for His people. And they are arriving at the time of the harvest. And so in this story, we see quite clearly that there are two things that we need as human beings that only God can provide. God can only provide bread, God can only provide food, and God can also only provide babies. The provision of bread and babies, this is the story of Ruth and how God's timing is perfect. Because at the end of the story, we have the grandfather of King David. Uh, his name is Obed, and he is born at the end of the story. And so this is a story that goes from great loss and great tragedy to great hope. And so we're going to look in particular at chapter 2 today. So if you have your Bibles with you, if you open up to uh, Ruth, it's a very small book, uh, just after the book of Judges. In fact, it's uh, seen as set in the time of the Judges in Israel's history. And the Judges was a time of peace and prosperity and happiness for all mankind. No, it wasn't. It was a terrible time of uh, conflict and war and uncertainty and trouble and famine. But we're going to have a look today at Ruth uh, chapter 2, okay? So if uh, I'm going to pick this up just in verse 1 and read through until the end of the chapter. And as per usual, I'm in the New International Version. Okay, Ruth chapter 2, and we'll pick it up here in verse 1. Remember, Naomi, her name means pleasant. Naomi means pleasant. But at the end of chapter 1, uh, she says to the... Uh, her res the residents of Bethlehem, don't call me that name anymore. Call me Mara. I've had a bitter experience. I've had a tough experience. Don't call me pleasant. Uh, the circumstances of my life right now are anything but pleasant. Call me Mara. Call me bitter. And chapter 2 really focuses on Ruth and a new character, Boaz, whose name means strength. Ruth chapter 2, verse 1. Now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side from the clan of Elimelech, a man of standing. Maybe on your version it says a man of wealth. In the King James Version, I think it says a mighty man of wealth, an outstanding man whose name was Boaz. Verse 2. And Ruth the Moabitess, as if we've forgotten. Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favor. That word favor in the Old Testament is the New Testament word grace. 
in whose eyes I find grace. Naomi said to her, go ahead, my daughter. So she went out as Ruth and began to glean in the fields behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she found herself working in a field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Elimelech. Can you see here already in verse 3, God is at work. As it turned out, by chance, she found herself in the field of Boaz. Verse 4, just then Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. And the Lord bless you, they called back. Boaz asked the foreman of his harvesters, Whose young woman is that? The foreman replied, She is the Moabitess who came back from Moab with Naomi. She said, Please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She went into the field and has worked steadily from morning till now, except for a short rest in the shelter. So Boaz said to Ruth, My daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with my servant girls. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the girls. I've told the men not to touch you. And whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. At this, Ruth bowed down with her face to the ground and she exclaimed, Why have I found such favor such grace in your eyes that you notice me a foreigner Boaz replied I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with a people you did not know before may the Lord repay you for what you have done may you be richly rewarded by the Lord the God of Israel under whose wings you have come to take refuge May I continue to find favor in your eyes, my Lord, she said. You have given me comfort and have spoken kindly to your servant, though I do not have the standing of one of your servant girls. At the mealtime, Boaz said to her, Come over here, have some bread and dip it in the wine vinegar. When she sat down with the harvesters, he offered her some roasted grain. She ate all she wanted and had some left over. And as she got up to glean, Boaz gave orders to his men. Even if she gathers among the sheaves, don't embarrass her. Rather, pull out some stalks for her from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up. And don't rebuke her. So Ruth gleaned in the field until evening... Then she threshed the barley she had gathered, and it amounted to about an ephah. She carried it back to town, and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gathered. Ruth also brought out and gave her what she had left over after she had eaten enough. Her mother-in-law asked her, Where did you glean today? Where did you work? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. Then Ruth told her mother-in-law about the one at whose place she had been working. The name of the man I work with today is Boaz, she said. The Lord bless him, Naomi said to her daughter-in-law. He has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead. She added, that man is our close relative. He is one of our kinsmen or family redeemers. Then Ruth, the Moabites, said, He even said to me, Stay with my workers until they finish harvesting all my grain. Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It would be good for you, my daughter, to go with his girls, because in someone else's field you might be harmed. So Ruth stayed close to the servant girls of Boaz to glean until the barley and wheat harvests were finished. And she lived with her mother-in-law. There's a great power that you can unlock in your life, that I can unlock in my life, and it's the power 
of imitation, the power of copying. Uh, the Bible uh, knows this very well, this principle. And uh, we uh, use the verse in uh, the New Testament that says, by beholding, we become changed. By beholding, we become changed. That's why it's not a good idea to put, plonk yourself in front of the mirror for too long. <laughs> by beholding, we become changed. We have the chance as human beings, we're dynamic. We have the chance to imitate and to copy. And this is why it's very important to have good role models in our life. The Bible says this in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Imitate God. Therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children, live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. Christ loved us. Here's this allusion again to our great divine human soldier of the cross. And offered himself as a sacrifice for us. A pleasing aroma to God. And Paul also writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. He says this. Paul says you should imitate me. Copy me, Paul says. Just as I imitate Christ. Copy me as I copy Christ. Now the only thing that you can take away at the end of your life, whether that's because uh, uh, life's uh, processes have its uh, fulfillment, we take our last breath and we, and we die, or whether we're left until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only thing that we can take out of this life is our character. It's the only thing that you can take out of this life. We won't be taking our reputation. We won't be taking our promotions. We won't be taking our cars or our houses or our possessions. The only thing that you can take at the end of your life in, into the next life with you is your character. And here in this chapter, as I was reading this this week, I thought, wow, this is, this is great behavior. This is great example to copy and to imitate. And I'd just like to point out quickly here 10 character traits that we find here in the lives of Boaz and Ruth. Boaz, the Israelite, and Ruth, the foreigner, the outsider, that we should imitate because there are certain characters uh, that we can build into our lives, certain characteristics I should say that we can build into our lives uh, that God will always bless. And the first character trait that we notice in Ruth chapter 2 verse 1 is integrity. We're introduced to Boaz as a man of integrity. He's a man of standing. He's a man of high social reputation. Like I said, the King James Version labels him a mighty man of wealth and substance. He is a man of influence. He is outstanding. I would challenge you and challenge myself every day when you get up in the morning. Be a child. Uh, be a man. Be a woman. That is going to live with integrity. Integrity comes from the same root word that we have for integrated, live an integrated life. Obviously our spirituality is part of that, our Bible reading and our prayer life. But also our balance between work and life and family and recreation and enjoyment too. Live an integrated life, be a man or a woman of integrity. Boaz is introduced to us as an outstanding man, the man of integrity. The second character trait that God always blesses, we find in Ruth chapter 2 verse 2, which is risk. Risk 
is something also God blesses. Ruth chapter 2 verse 2 says this. Ruth is saying to Naomi, let me go and be vulnerable. Let me go to the fields and pick, over, pick up the leftover grain that I find behind anyone in whose eyes I find favor. We don't get this when we're reading it through it, but Ruth is taking a tremendous risk here as a young woman and as a foreigner. Because in the fields, the harvesting fields, uh, there was great vulnerability in this. You, she could be subjected to physical abuse. She could be subjected to verbal abuse. But the need for food is pressing. And so she doesn't stay at home like Naomi and throw a pity party for herself. She gets out there, takes the risk, and starts working. Are you a person of faith and action and risk? Ruth is very vulnerable here. And we can see in verse 9 and in verse 22, when uh, Boaz says in verse 9, I've told the men not to touch you. And in verse 22, when Naomi says, stay with the girls and you won't be harmed. Ruth is going out into the field, taking a risk. This is also a character trait that God blesses. The third character trait that God always blesses is the ability to notice others. Who's in your circle? Who's in your sphere? Who do you notice? Do you notice others? Boaz, in coming to the field, noticed Ruth. In verse 5, he said to his foreman, Whose young woman is that? He's asking, Who does she belong to? And in verse 10, uh, Ruth replies to Boaz, uh, How have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me? And then also in verse 19, Naomi says, uh, Blessed be the man who took notice of you. And this is an amazing noticing because... People of uh, wealth and standing and celebrity don't usually notice others, do they? It's usually the way around. So if you want a blessed life, if you want God to bless your life, notice others, particularly those who are vulnerable. The fourth character trait that God always blesses that we find in Ruth chapter 2 is something that I fear is going out of fashion both in my own country and here and that's politeness. Uh, Ruth chapter 2 and verse 7 we see Naomi, uh, Ruth making this request. Verse 7 in the New International Version she says Please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. You know that God set up Israel to have a concern for the weak and the vulnerable and the poor. There are laws that you can find in Leviticus and in Deuteronomy that protect people who are vulnerable to uh, starvation. <laughs> and those who are harvesting in Israel um, were to uh, leave certain parts of their field available for people to come behind and uh, glean, uh, take, pick up the leftovers. But you notice in this verse that Ruth is not enforcing her rights. Are you a person that always wants your, have to have it your way? You always want to enforce your rights? Are you a person that's polite in your interactions with others? Do you say please and thank you? Are you grateful? for what others do for you and with you. I would suggest to you that Christians should be known for their politeness and for their kindness, not for their rudeness. Ruth 
asked for permission. She didn't just go straight to the field and exercise her rights. The fifth character trait that God always blesses, we can find in verses uh, 7 and 17. And there's not much that really needs to be said about this, but it's the characteristic of being a hard worker. Ruth goes into the field early in the morning. She uh, stops for a brief rest, and she works until evening. There is a pressing need, the need for food. And she works hard to make sure that she and her mother-in-law, who she's committed to, has food on the table. And we'll find out a little bit in the, the rest of the story how uh, generously Ruth fares in her gleaning. Now, you don't usually have to tell Americans, do you, to be hardworking? Or do you? I think there's a good balance that can be found again. And I think I go back to this first trait of integrity, of having an integrated life. Work hard, but don't overwork. Don't do it to the, to the extent where you try and burn the candle at both ends. You know, they say that people that burn the candle at both ends are not very illuminated. <laughs> so work hard, but also learn to rest and relax. Exercise and recuperate as well. I guess I've got to get that in because I'm taking three and a half weeks off soon. <laughs> Back to England. So be hardworking, but be balanced. The sixth character trait that God always blesses is the ability to protect others. To protect others. And we should do this even more so in the church. Ruth 2 verses 8 and 9 says this. So Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with my servant girls. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the girls. I have told the men not to touch you. Boaz has a remarkable ability to notice others and protect others. Sometimes it might not be best for you to share what you're thinking in your head about someone else. Protect people. Think the best of people. Honor people's reputation. Think the best of people, not the worst of people. There was great danger for Ruth out in the fields, and Boaz comes across as a person of protection. I like that. Seventh character trait that God always blesses is humility. Verse 10, at this, Ruth bowed down with her face to the ground. She exclaimed, why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me a foreigner? Humility. Humility is the way of Jesus. Humilia humiliation comes from, is linked to the same root as the word humility. And when Jesus, the great divine human soldier, was lifted up on the cross for your sins and for my sins. In humiliation. What he chose as the path of humility and humiliation was in fact the greatest pathway to exaltation and glory. So you can see the reversal in this trait. Humility. Ruth bowed down with her face to the ground in a different manner, seeking the favor of her benefactor. The eighth trait of character that God always blesses. If you want to have a blessed life, build these things into your life. We find it in Ruth chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. Speak kind and comforting words. Your words, your thoughts, and your words, and your, and your deeds are like seeds. We can seed each other's lives with good things. And when you plant the seed and it dies, you grow a harvest. God has built this principle into nature, but he's also built it into our human relationships and interactions as well. So parents especially, this is very important, that you seed good words and good thoughts and affirming faces into the lives of your children. 
because otherwise you may get a harvest that is unexpected. This is the highlight of the chapter when Boaz says this. And it's interesting to note that Boaz is going to be the one that fulfills his own prayer here. Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. Do you think Ruth had any idea that she was going to end up in the field of the person who already knew something about her? You see God's goodness and God's providence in these, in these words. It's amazing. Don't doubt how much God is interested in hovering over your life. Don't doubt how much God is hovering over your life to bring in his providential goodness. I love these words. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. God has a system of rewards. God has a system of payback. But he'll only bless certain seeds. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you've come to take refuge. Isn't that a beautiful verse? Beautiful picture of God in there, spreading out his wings of protection. Uh, this, is, uh, this is an awesome verse. May the Lord repay you for what you've done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you've come to take refuge. This is the great reversal. The young widow from Moab becomes the great-grandmother of King David. As we pause and uh, look at the last verse of chapter 1, where there's no hope. Is there any hope? Is there an ounce of hope? Is there a drop of hope? Is there a seed of hope? In this uh, terrible set of circumstances, we, the, the, the narrator of the story asks us to say, God, can you bring anything good out of this? God said, yes, I can. Yes, I can. It might take time, but I can. And Ruth becomes the great-grandmother of King David. And when Jesus comes, the great divine human soldier, he is called the son of Abraham and the son of David in the first words of the New Testament. The eighth characteristic that God wants to bless in your lives is the ability to speak kind and comforting words to others. The ninth characteristic that we find in, in Ruth chapter 2 uh, that God blesses is hospitality. Hospitality. I, in the last two weeks, I've been the benefactor of the hospitality of two or three people that have done something for me whilst my wife was away that really touched me. Um, uh, just kind invitations uh, and a couple of other things. Uh, I don't think there's anything that makes us feel special in, uh, more special than, than receiving uh, hospitality. Remember when Jesus came to visit Sodom and Gomorrah with his two angels? And Abraham rushes to provide hospitality. Sometimes we're entertaining angels unaware. It's biblical. Hospitality. In Romans, Paul encourages the Roman Christians in uh, Romans chapter 12 to practice, get good at hospitality. Hospitality. And this is amazing because usually... It was the foreigners that provided water and food for the Israelites. But in this story, and it was the women for the men. But have you noticed in this story, Boaz is offering water to Ruth. It's a man to a woman. And also, uh, he is offering her to come and eat some uh, special roasted grain. This was a delicacy. This was good food. Uh, in the story, there's a reversal there. The men are offering the hospitality to the women and the Israelites to the foreigners. The tenth and final characteristic that we find in this passage that God blesses and wants to bless in your life as well. There's a special Hebrew word for this and we came up against this in the first chapter too. It's called chesed. It's generosity and kindness. Generosity and kindness. I can see in this chapter that Boaz lives by the ABCD principle. Have you heard of the ABCD principle? 
going above and beyond the call of duty. He doesn't just say to Ruth, uh, go to the edges of my field and glean. He, said, he brings her in. He brings her in. There's a great method of evangelism that we can see in these verses. These character traits to bring people in. Generosity and kindness. He didn't just say, look, you know, my harvesters are going to have a good meal here. If there's any crumbs, we'll give them to you, okay? You can take them home. Inclusiveness. Inclusiveness. It's amazing inclusiveness that Boaz offers here. The Bible tells us that Ruth gleaned an ephah. You know what an ephah is, right, Miles? How much is an ephah? Well, of course, it's a tenth of an omer. Uh, scholars recommend it some, somewhere between 30 and maybe 50 pounds. 30 and 50 pounds of food she comes home with at the end of a day's cleaning. This is amazing. We miss this sometimes in the Bible record. Now the harvesting period lasts, lasted roughly seven weeks between uh, Passover and Pentecost. If she gleaned that amount every day, she would have enough food for her and Naomi for a year. For a year. Can you see the reversal that's taking place here? A hopeless situation. God infuses. God brings the harvest and he brings the person to show generosity and kindness to the family. God works through people and he wants to work through you and through me as well. Ruth chapter 2 verse 20. He has not stopped showing his kindness, his hesed to the living and the dead. So you want to be a blessed person, have a blessed life? Looking especially at the young people here, learn these traits of character that God blesses. Integrity, godly risk. Notice others, be polite, work hard, protect others, be humble. Speak kind and comforting words. Be hospitable. Be generous. Be kind. Galatians 6, 7 through 10 says this in the contemporary English version. You can't fool God, so don't make a fool of yourself. You will harvest what you plant. If you follow your selfish desires, you'll harvest destruction. But if you follow the Spirit, the source, the growing force and source of these character traits, you will harvest eternal life. That's what I'm in for. Don't get tired of helping others. That's a good one for me and you, Pastor Michael. Don't get tired of helping others. You will be rewarded when the time is right. If you don't give up, we should help people whenever we can, especially if they are outsiders. You know, the Bible doesn't say that. Especially if they are followers of the Lord. Now, God bless you this Memorial Day weekend. Remember the 10 characteristics that we find in Ruth chapter 2 that God always blesses. And remember the sacrifice of the divine human soldier at Calvary for you and for me. Amen. Let's uh, stand together and sing our final song, which is taken straight out of the book of Ruth, chapter 2, and it's Under His Wings, number 529. Your hymnals, all the words will be on the screen.
thank you, God, for your great uh, hesed, your loving kindness, your generosity towards us. Help us to uh, take time to seed our lives with your words, because a great harvest will be the result, and the end will be eternal life. Thank you for rewarding us for what we do for you and for what we do for each other. Bless us to this end, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.